Okay, so here we are in Excel. Hopefully you've downloaded the file so you can follow right along step by step. Now let's take a step back and think about what we're actually doing here. We are looking at field goal data in the National Football League here in the United States, so the NFL. Now if you live outside the U.S. or are not familiar with American football, I'll just basically explain, you know, in condensed fashion what a field goal actually is. So a team is going down the field and of course they want to score a touchdown to get the maximum points. However, if the team doesn't quite make it and they're close enough to the end zone, they can choose to kick a field goal. So instead of six points for a touchdown, you could kick a field goal and get three points, which is better than nothing, right? He also wrote one time, I'm not just a kicker, I'm a player. And the kick is good. There will be no three-peat. The Giants win it 15-13. Now, of course, you can only, you know, kick the ball so far. And one of the interesting things we're going to look at um, in this uh, exercise is what we'll actually, you know, we'll be figuring out what the actual physical limits are of an NFL field goal kicker. So that's one of the side issues that are actually kind of interesting. Now, each kicker has their longest field goal they made for any particular season. So if you look at this first spreadsheet, on the left hand side you have the name of the player, their team, and you know, some other information. Now, I've only included players that had at least 10 field goal attempts during the regular season. So we're not dealing with any playoffs or anything in this file. It's just the regular season. So if they had 10 attempts, they're on this list. Now what we're interested in is their longest field goal. So if you look over here on the uh, far column it's called long, and that is their longest field goal they made during the season. So this is for 2011. If I click on the third tab, I have the same thing for 2010. Those are the last two full regular seasons. Let's go back to 2011. One of the kind of weird things to understand, and people often get confused by this, is that the length of a field goal is not where the ball actually begins. Because if you ever watched American football, and I know I have a lot of viewers from overseas, that's why I'm explaining this, is that the ball begins at the line of scrimmage where the offense and defense are close face to face. During a field goal, the ball is then snapped by a long snapper. It's snapped backward seven yards to where the kicker will actually kick it from. So the kicker automatically has to kick it seven more yards just because of the snap. Now, of course, from where the kicker kicks it, the ball will go all the way to the zero yard line, the goal line. But that's not where the actual goal is for a field goal. The goal for a field goal is actually the back of the end zone and off the ground. So you have to calculate that distance into the field goal as well. And what that comes out to is that the ball is snapped backwards seven yards and from the goal line to the field goal, the actual upright field goal, that is calculated as 10 yards. So when we see the longest field goal here, we actually have to subtract out the seven yards the ball was snapped back and the 10 yards that represent the end zone to actually figure out where the ball actually started physically on the field. When it says, you know, so-and-so kicked a 45-yard field goal, that does not mean the ball started on the 45-yard line. It actually means it, the ball started, you know, was snapped from much closer than the 45-yard line. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to subtract out the snap distance backward, the seven yards, and the end zone distance to figure out where the ball actually begins. 
Because if you're a coach and you're driving down the field at the end of the game and you need a field goal to win the game, you need to know the absolute minimum distance you have to travel before your field goal kicker has a realistic chance of making a field goal to win the game for you. So that's what we're actually going to figure out. We're going to figure out where the ball is actually snapped from, and that will tell us a lot of information about the actual process of field goal kicking um, in the National Football League. So that was five minutes of explanation and background, but if you don't really understand that, then this isn't going to make a whole lot of sense. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is under the placement column, we're going to subtract out the seven yards for the snap that goes backwards to where the kicker is. So we're going to do some simple formulas here. So to do that, we'll select equals. We'll select the long cell over to the left, minus 7, and hit enter. And then we'll drag down all the way to the bottom, and I'll do it for every kicker. Okay, so we just subtracted out the distance the ball is snapped backward. Now we need to subtract out the 10 yards that represent the distance in the end zone. So we're going to do equals. Then we'll select the placement cell, minus 10. And that'll give us the actual line of scrimmage where the ball began, where the ball was snapped from. So we'll drag down, and there we go. So let's take a look at this first uh, kicker here. Uh, David Akers kicked his longest field goal of 55 yards. Now where did the ball actually start? Well... It started on the 38-yard line. The offense and defense were up the 38-yard line. The long snapper snapped the ball backward seven yards. And then Akers kicked the ball. It went those seven yards, then all the way to the goal line, and then 10 more yards to get the actual 55-yard field goal. So if you notice, 55 minus 17 is 38. That's where the ball actually started. So, if, you know, if I'm on the team and I'm the coach, I know that we have to at least get to the 38-yard line for my kicker to have a realistic chance of kicking the game-winning field goal. Okay, so let's go to the 2010 field goals, which is the third column, and here we're going to do the same thing. So, we'll hit equals, the long, the distance, minus 7 for the placement, the snap backward, and then we'll... Go all the way down. Then for the scrimmage, remember we've got to take out 10, so equals the placement cell, minus 10. And then we will drag all the way down. All right. So again, let's look at one here. Let's look at the top. So we have Sebastian Janikowski, who is an incredible, awesome kicker for the Oakland Raiders. And during 2010, his longest field goal was 59 yards. Now that ball was actually snapped from the 42-yard line. So it was snapped back seven yards, and they had to kick it to the upright for a long distance total of 59 yards. Okay, it's pretty impressive. No, he has kicked longer. There, make him think pass and sneak the lead draw in there. Talking about Janikowski now in the warm-ups. Just have to be looking, and so are our cameras. Look at this thing. Hey, goodbye. Now, that's good. And the fans down there in the end zone loved it. His career long, by the way, in a real game, on a real kick, is 61 yards. He was four out of seven last year from 50 plus. And this is going to be a 63 yard field goal attempt, which would match the longest in NFL history. Sebastian Janikowski from 63. Kicks on the way. It is good. He got it. Wow. NFL history tied here. Two others have hit one from that far. Tom Dempsey, Jason Elam, 
and add Sebastian Janikowski to a very short list on a very long kick. Wow. He should be fired up. What a kick. First year head coach Hugh Jackson says I gave him a shot. <laughs> and he made it. How about that? We have found our lines of scrimmage for both years. So now we can actually do the statistical analysis we want to do for that information. Let's go back to 2011. Now what we're going to do is select our scrimmage, lines of scrimmage data. So we'll select copy. Then I'm going to go to the 2011 placement tab. Now actually I've already pasted it there, but I'll do it again. So I'll select the top cell. I'll hit paste values, okay? Otherwise, it'll try to paste the formula and that won't work. So just paste values, okay? There we go. Now I'm gonna go to the 2010 field goal, select the lines of scrimmage. I'll copy that, go to 2010 placement. And again, I've already done it. So I'll do it again, paste values, and there we go. So I'm gonna go back to tab two, the 2011 placement. Now in the middle of the screen, I've pasted the actual formula for figuring out the standard deviation. Now if you have the formula for standard deviation, you also have the formula for variance, okay? Because the standard deviation is just the square root of the variance. So if you were to erase the square root sign in that formula, that would be the formula for the variance. Of course, you'd actually have to put a squared next to the S over there. Okay, but you have the formula in front of you. Now we're gonna build this formula um, in Excel. We're going to do it step by step so you can see how it actually, you know, works. So if you look at a formula, we have an X here in the middle, and that value represents our actual line of scrimmage. So that X represents our scrimmage data here in the first column. Now, the next thing we need is the mean. Remember, that's X bar. So we're going to use Excel to figure out the mean of our scrimmage. So that's equals average, open parentheses, then we'll select that information, close parentheses, equal. Okay, so the mean is 36.15. So what does this actually mean in real life? Well, if you take all the kickers, longest field goals of the 2011 season, on average, those longest kicks were snapped from the 36 yard line, okay, the 36.15 yard line. But that's the average, okay? So if your kicker is making those field goals in that range, that's pretty good. Now, that's not how long the field goal actually is though, right? That's just where the ball is snapped from. We'd have to add in the 17 yards, the seven back for the snap, and then the 10 yards for the end zone to figure out exactly how long that is. So what's 36 plus 17? Well, it's 53. So, on average, the longest field goal in the longest field goals in the league in 2011 was 53 yards. But they all started on average on the 36 and change yard line. So we found the mean because we need that for our formula. So there it is. So at the top of the mean column, these will all be the same. It will just be whatever the mean is. So remember, we do that by equals. Then we'll select the cell for mean. Then I'm going to hit F4, and that makes that an absolute reference, so nothing changes or acts weird. So I'll hit Enter. And then I'll just drag down. Okay, so they're all 36 is what they should be. So if you look at our formula here, we have X minus X bar. So we have our X and we have our X bar. So let's go ahead and do the subtraction. So this would be equals the scrimmage minus the mean, hit enter, okay? Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the decimals back in so you can kind of see where the decimals are coming from. Okay, now to do that subtraction all the way down, I just select and drag and there we go. So that column, the scrim minus mean is the same thing as X minus X bar. So we have what's in the parentheses. So whatever's in this column, the third column, is what's in the parentheses in our formula. 
So we have that. Now what's the next thing we have to do? Well, we have to square that. That's the squared sign in our formula. So in the next column, we're gonna square what we got in the third column. So equals, and we'll select that cell, hit the little caret, the up, um, upward little triangle there, then two, that'll square that, and we'll hit enter. And we've got some long, nasty decimal that will just sort of ignore the decimal portions and it'll be full there. And actually I am gonna reduce the number of decimals down to two to make it a little more manageable. Now keep in mind, there's more information there, but I'm gonna make it two to make it easier to read. And I'll center that as well. Okay, so believe it or not, we are pretty far along in actually manually calculating the variance and standard deviation of this data. So what do we have now? We have the x minus x bar squared. So we have everything we need in this side of the uh, formula. But what does this big sigma sign mean? Well, that means we have to add all that up, okay? That means the sum of. So we have to add everything in this column. So I'm gonna go ahead and at the very bottom, I will say equals sum. And then I will select those. So that comes out to 424.24, probably more than that because we've reduced some of the decimals. I'll center that. Okay, so we have the entire top of our standard deviation equation. So we found x minus x bar, we've squared them, and then we've added them all up. So that's the entire top of that formula. Now, remember the variance is just kind of if we pretend this um, square root bar doesn't exist. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our 424 divided by n minus one. Well, what's n minus one? That's just the number of data figures we have, okay, minus one. So down here, I've already figured it out. We have 33 total data points, minus one is 32. So for the variance, all I'm gonna do is equals the 424, 2, 4, which is the top of our fraction, divided by n minus one, which is 32, and that's it. Congratulations, you just manually calculated your variance. Very, very good. So what about standard deviation? Well, that's just the square root of the variance. So equals square root, which is SQRT, of the variance, so we'll click that cell, and there we go. So, what do we know here? We know that our variance is 13.26, if we round up. Our standard deviation is 3.64 and some change. Now, that is actually yards. We're, this, all this information is in yards. So it's, it's actually yards on the football field, okay? So, the standard deviation for the 2011 season is 3.64 yards. The mean is 36.15. So we have a mean of 36.15 and a standard deviation of 3.64. So that tells us a lot about our data, okay? And we'll talk about that more in this video and in subsequent videos. Now we're gonna go ahead and find our coefficient of variation because it's very simple to figure out. It just gives us a little bit more information about our data and allows us to compare it to the 2011 year when we do that here in a second. So remember that is just the relationship between the standard deviation and the mean. So equals parentheses standard deviation cell divided by the mean cell and then hit enter. Now, I want this to be a percent, so I'll select the cell, go up and hit the percentage sign, add a couple of decimals, and there we go. So, we have found out a lot of information manually in a very, very short time. Now, let's use Excel's actually built-in functions to figure out you know, if we did it right, okay? So we can go ahead and check that. Now, for variance, we're just gonna select the cell next to it, equals VAR. In this case, we're gonna select VAR 
S because we're using the sample variance. So we'll click that. Now we'll um, select our original data. Close parentheses. And there we go. Look at that. 13.257, 13.257. Bingo. Okay. We'll do the same for standard deviation. So it equals STD, standard dev S, STD EV S. Select our data, close parentheses, and there we go. So we calculated it manually, and then we checked it using Excel's built-in functions so we can see that we actually did it right. Okay, so let's go ahead and very, very quickly do the 2010 data. So I'm just going to basically do it without saying a whole lot because you just saw me do the entire thing here. Okay, so first thing I need is the mean. I'll kind of talk to myself. Average, select our lines of scrimmage. So 35.4. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and fill in our mean. So equals the mean. I'll hit F4 to make it absolute. Drag down. Center it. Very good. Now I'll do the subtraction. So equals line of scrimmage minus the mean. Now I'll drag down to there. I'll center that. And now we get to square everything there. So it equals the difference squared. And then we'll drag down, center that. Whoops. Got one. There we go. Okay, let's pause here just for a second. So what have we found out? We know that the mean line of scrimmage for the longest kicks in 2010 was the 35.4 yard line. Well, what was it in 2011? Oops. It was 36.1. So about a half a yard closer on average in 2010, okay? So it doesn't tell us a whole lot, but it still is a half yard closer on average. The longest kicks in 2010 on average began a half a yard closer to the goal. Okay, so we need to go ahead and figure out our variance. So remember, the first one we need is the sum. So equals the sum of our squared differences here. So that's 608. Center that. Now, to do the variance, what do we need? equals the sum of the differences divided by n minus 1, which in this case was 34. Okay, there were a few more kickers in 2010 with at least 10 attempts. Hit that. So here our variance is 17.89. And standard deviation is the square root of that. So equals square root of the variance. And there we go. I'll go ahead and make that two decimal places. Now, we want to check our work. So I'm going to go ahead and do the cell next to it. So it equals VAR S. Go back to my original data. Select that. Close it. Okay, everything looks good there. Same thing for standard deviation. Equals ST dev S. Select my data. Original data. Everything checks out there. Okay, so we know we did it right both ways. Now again, the whole point of this video is to show you exactly how the calculations are done manually. Even though you can do them in Excel, you can do them in SPSS, you can do them in whatever uh, package you want. But the idea is to know how it works manually. Because what we're doing here is we're looking at, you know, as the PowerPoint version of the presentation says, we're looking at the distance from the mean. Okay, how spread out the data is from mean. So if we look at these comparisons here, what do we what do we see? Now, the mean here is 35.4. In 2011, like I said, it was 36.15. Now what about the standard deviations? Well, in 2011, it was 3.64. In 2010, 
in 2010, 4.23. So what we need to ask ourselves here is which you know, data, the data for which year was more spread out, was more variable? Well, it was 2010. The standard deviation in this case is 4.23 yards versus 3.64 yards, okay? So, not quite a full yard, okay, but it is more dispersed. It's more spread out. There's more variation in our data. Now, what does this you know, mean in real life? Well, you know, we know that based on these two years' data, they're, they're actually pretty close. So, in one year, we had a little bit over 36. The next year, the mean was uh, 35 and 0.4. So, it seems to be that on average, you know, sort of the sweet spot for the longest field goal, you know, you can make is right around the 36-yard line, which would translate again into a 53-yard field goal. So if your offense makes it down to the 36-yard line and you have a really good kicker, you're going to play the odds and you go for it if you want to win the game. So that's the end of the Excel portion of our video. Now we'll go back into PowerPoint and look at actual a diagram of this data and then finish up.